The Holy Spirit then inspired someone to record these acts of God. The Holy Spirit also illumines the records. That's why you as a born-again Christian get way more out of the Bible than someone who's not saved. You can read the Bible from cover to cover, but if you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you're not saved, you don't have the illumination that the Holy Spirit gives. God still, still speaks to us out of the pages of the Bible. I can tell you, this book is what it's all about. So it seems to be important that we understand that there is a, a process of revelation, inspiration, and illumination. We must also consider that the scripture forever stands as authority. You show me a church that begins to back off of the authority of scripture, and I'll show you a church that is, that is headed in the wrong direction. You know, we have a constitution, a statement of faith here at Maranatha Baptist Church. But I'm going to tell you, this right here is our authority. Amen. This right here must be our authority. And for me personally, for you as an individual, as a born-again Christian, you must be absolutely 100% completely sure that this is your authority. How many of us would solve a whole lot of our problems if we went beyond just saying that and just made up our mind that this is so? What does the Bible have to say about marriage? What does the Bible have to say about divorce? What does the Bible have to say about child rearing? What does the Bible have to say about interacting with one another? What does the Bible have to say about business? What does the Bible have to say about commerce? What does the Bible have to say about sin? What does the Bible have to say about man? What does the Bible have to say about government? What does the Bible have to say about capital punishment? What does the Bible have to say about anything? None of that matters if you don't really have complete confidence in the Word of God. Right. If this is not your authority, I'm not saying your final authority, it's the beginning. It's where we begin and end with the Bible. The Bible is the authority for faith because of its importance. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 asserts that Scripture is profitable. Now, you know what? This ought to mean a lot to a lot of people in this materialistic culture that we live in. Whoa, did he just say profitable? Profitable? The Word of God has profit for us. That's really exactly what the Scriptures say. There's no denying that. There is profit. It's what you define as profit that will change when you get into this book, it is useful. It is, it is important for our lives. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to notice how, but I want you to think about that for just a moment. When you walk into somebody's home and they have a, a family Bible that's underneath the coffee table and it's gathering dust and it's never opened, it's never read. You know that people might even have a reverence for the Bible, but they don't consider it to be profitable. Where is your go-to book? What's your go-to source for your, for your everyday life? You just, you're going through whatever you're going through right now. What's your go-to what, What's your modus operandi? What's your mode of operation? What's the first thing you do? Who do you call? Who do you text? Do we really read this book the way we should? You know, we can brag all day long about how, you know what, I know I've got the Bible in my hand and I carry my King James Bible everywhere I go, but if you don't read the book, then what does it matter? It is important for the teaching of doctrine. I'm sorry, but doctrine is not a bad word, folks. Amen. Teaching matters. Right. This idea that today we're going to gather a bunch of people together and we're going to, we're going to de-emphasize teaching just so that everybody can feel good is wrong. Right. 
The Bible must be the source of our doctrine, not what is trendy, what seems to be the mood of the nation or, or a particular age group. All the doctrine or teaching to which we subscribe must be tested against God's word as revealed in the Bible. What we believe and how we believe are tied closely together. I got to tell you something. You just got to just make up your mind and say this timeless book is my truth, my teaching, my doctrine. We cannot expect to find maybe uh, the word Wi-Fi in our Bible or even newspaper. <laughs> But I will say this, and I mean this without apology. There is not one issue in anyone's life. There's not one concern, not one decision, not one, not, not one anything that's going on in their life that the Bible doesn't deal with. That's what's so remarkable, absolutely remarkable about this book. I can tell you that there is no book that can compare to God's book when it comes to being able to deal with, with every single issue that anyone might deal with in the 21st century. And should the Lord tarry in the 22nd century and beyond, whatever the Lord might desire to do. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I can tell you if he does, he left us his book, his God-breathed manual for life. No doubt about it. I can tell you that this book will never be outdated. You know, I, I really, I really got to kind of laugh at some of these people who say, well, you know, I just don't like the these or thous. I will admit this, that you actually probably need to know how to read. I would say that for some of us, who maybe weren't the best readers in the world, the Bible helped us. Yeah. <laughs> it, our vocabulary grew as we studied the Word of God. I can tell you that, that sure was the case for me. I've mentioned this before. My brother George was the A student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 11 months older than me, a little smart aleck. I wasn't. He had actually even read the Bible a, a few times through before he got out of high school. I didn't. But I'll tell you what, when the Lord miraculously saved me, I couldn't get enough of this book. Uh, amen. And I will tell you that through the years, George has begun to, to, to notice that there's a difference between just reading this book and this book meaning what it means to someone like me who's born again. But I can, I can say this, that there is no doubt in my mind that we have to just come to a place where we just decide that we've got to study this book. We have got to pour our heart into this book. We've got to make up our mind that this is the beginning and the end for us. Notice, it is important for conviction. I like that. Now, some would say, well, you know, the word conviction is not in the Bible. What do you think the word reproof means? Reproof. Reproof here does not mean fault finding so much as it means conviction. In the Bible, we find the conviction of our sins. May I, may I tell you that in this world today, we can... We, we have a conscience, and we can live in the world, and we can feel bad about things. But there's something about the Word of God, the way the Word of God can pierce our heart and convict us like nothing else can. Oh, I'm not talking about somebody beating you down. I'm not talking about somebody writing you. I'm talking about the Word of God revealing yourself to you in a very real way. Notice, it is important for correction. The Bible, the Bible must correct our understanding and our obedience. 
Another way of putting it would be for correction of errors and discipline in obedience. You see, the real meaning of this is that all the theories, all theologies, and all ethical teachings are to be tested by the teaching of the Bible. I have a tough time when I see people uh, want to quote secular people and, and philosophies and somehow try to raise any other opinion to the same level as the scripture. I'll tell you what, anytime somebody wants to post scripture, I say amen, praise the Lord, and hallelujah. That gets my attention. It is important for instruction in righteousness. What about that? This could be understood as training in good living. You want to step out into this world and deal with the things that are coming your way? You need to be trained. We're all about training here at Maranatha Baptist Church. This is our training manual. There is no other place to learn the meaning of righteousness than from him who is righteous. May I tell you something? Instruction in righteousness is what the word of God is. For you and I, we are, we are born again. We've trusted Christ as Savior. Now it's time to receive this instruction, direction. This is so contrary to the world in which we live in today. Nobody wants to be told to do anything. Nobody wants to sign up for anything. Nobody wants to, to step up and say, I need to grow. I need to learn. And there's where the problem lies. And thirdly, thirdly this morning, the Bible is the authority for faith because of its intent. And I just find this to be so important that we see this. Because you want to talk about keeping the main thing the main thing? Notice, it has the intent of salvation. It has the intent of salvation. Notice verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. By the way, how about that? When should a person begin to start learning the word of God? As soon as you possibly can. Amen? I know uh, Carrie was reading the Bible to little, they call him TM. I still haven't gotten used to that. We haven't forgotten Tom and Carrie, have we? You remember little TM? We have got to see them this uh, last few days here, and he's no longer a little bitty baby. He's, he's running around. He's making sure that everybody knows what the two-year-old period is all about. Amen? Matter of fact, well, I'll just leave it at that. Amen? But I'll tell you what, he has heard the entire word of God. Even before he was born, his mother was reading the Bible. Amen. I, I know you might be thinking, okay, Judges chapter 3, where they pierce the dagger into the fat man's belly, and water and mud and dirt come out. I mean, how, do you, how does the kid get it? Hey, listen, it's the word of God, my friend. I can tell you, you, you know, don't overthink things. Trust the Lord. And when I read this, I think this is where this is where 90% of our answers come from. If we were to simply just take this so seriously, that from a child thou has known the Holy Scriptures. Wouldn't that make a difference? I was uh, I was having a conversation. I can't remember who I'm talking to and when it happened, so that's the part where I stall for just a moment. But I, I remember a conversation about about preparing children in the younger grades to go up into youth group. And the huge, oh, I know exactly where it was now, thank you very much. I, what's really great is when, I can't remember who I talked to, but you're sitting there and you remember the conversation. <laughs> but we were talking about how, how teaching children and training children early on uh, is so noticeable to the next teacher in the next grade. Pastor Ashley can say, I can tell when 
the fifth and sixth graders have been in the Word of God. I can see.